Well, all across the country, any time I talk to my friends from California to Florida to Georgia, the one thing that parents are talking about is children returning to school. Um, how are we going to do it to ensure their health and their safety? Well, we decided to speak with medical director and family physician at Revive Atlanta, Dr. Bindaya Gandhi, about some of the important factors that we all need to consider. Take a look. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. Let's dive right in. What health and safety measures must be taken into consideration before we can even start a reopening schools? There's a lot of health and safety measures that we really need to take into consideration. I know everybody is torn apart as to which direction we should go, whether we should send our kids to school, um, but as well as con continue to be safe. So there's a lot of things that we need to consider, like. Um, the staff, we need to consider how healthy our staff is, how healthy teachers are, how healthy kids are, right? We need to consider communities right now, which community your school's in. Are the cases of COVID high right now? Is it low right now? Because all of that pays a, plays into part as to should we send our kids back to school? And you know, doctor, different districts are doing different things. So it, again, we have never seen anything like this. So we're all just kind of trying to make decisions uh, day by day, hour by hour sometimes. What do you advise school districts? Um, how should they go about implementing some of the measures that we're talking about to ensure safety? Yeah, so honestly, the biggest thing that we need to do right now is pay attention to numbers. We need to see, you know, is there an outbreak in the community? Is it controlled? What is the mortality rate right now? A lot of things to consider. And if everything is low, then maybe we can consider integrating school slowly, one at a time, in different phases. So it's unrealistic and not appropriate to put all the kids back into school like we did last September and August. There really needs to be certain plans in place that we take together as a, as a community to make sure that we're taking all necessary precautions so everybody is staying safe. Doctor, my husband actually owns uh, a daycare in Gwinnett County, and so he has been open. But, you know, it, it's really been, um, again, it's been so challenging because uh, cases are on the rise, but we need to stay open as an essential business. Yeah. Um, for parents that are having to go back to work, um, what should they consider before sending their child back? So, you know, it's really hard for parents right now, and this is the common complaint I get. This is why parents want their kids to go back in school, because honestly, parents don't have the time, nor do they have the ability to teach their kids or homeschool their kids. Let's talk about the, the pro going back to school. Give me some, some reasons why it is just so important for our students to have that inter interaction. Uh, you know, uh, give us a few of those. Yeah, so you know, kids need socialization just like we do, you know, and teachers are taught how to detect learning disabilities, ADHD, hyperactivity, you know, they can pick up if a child has is abused at home, if a child is um, having any issues going on, like having suicidal ideation or that kind of thing. So parents don't always are, are don't always pick up on this information, you know. Kids going back to school is also essential because there's so many kids kids right now that are not having enough food to eat and they get food at school. Even when it comes to resources, a lot of kids don't have access to a computer or the internet or even, you know, the same books and as other kids do. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of disparity um, when kids are at home. That, that's one of the reasons why the American Academy of Pediatrics as well as CDC um, and organizations are, are requiring and, and wanting kids to go back to school because there's a lot of benefits for kids to be around other kids. Absolutely, I know my, my third grader, rising fourth grader, start crying. She's like, I wanna go back. And I was like, I not yet, honey. All right, now for those listening that are pro staying home, let's talk about the benefits aside from health of doing the e-learning. So there's a lot of benefits of learning from home. So uh, the biggest thing is structure. Um, parents can, if their parent has the time to um, help their child out, Learning from home can give a child a lot of discipline and structure. It's basically them learning on their own. Um, the other benefits of learning uh, at home is, you know, making sure that the child um, is able to be creative at home because 
they're, they're kind of stalled at school. So it allows them to be a little bit more creative at home in their own environment. There's less distraction at home for some kids. They work better one-on-one -on -one with a parent or uh, virtually. So there's a lot of good benefits from learning at home as well. Sure, and um, let's talk about if somebody at home is high risk, um, what would you advise family members? Right now, we're saying that if a child is high risk, they definitely need to learn from home. If they have a family member that's high risk, they need to be at home learning as well. The reason is because they are more likely to contract the virus at school from and bring it home versus spreading the virus to another classmate or to a teacher. So this is why it's important. And this is why parents really need to pay attention to what their current medical problems are and who the child is exposed to, especially when it comes to grandparents and if a grandparent is helping taking care of the child. Yeah, great advice. And last question, as a parent and medical professional, um, would you feel safe sending your child back to school? So, you know, I have two kids right now, they're babies. So right now, um, you know, my kids are staying at home because I have a nine month old and a two and a half year old and they're just too small. Um, but you know, it has, you have to look at your individual situation differently. You know, do you have help at home? Um, if you have help at home, great. Maybe you're able to keep your child at home, but if you don't have help at home, then maybe you do need to send your child back to school. You kind of need to weigh the risks and the benefits of you know what you're able to do it's not a straight easy answer for everybody every family is going to make the best decision for themselves it's it's not cut and dry and i really wish it were um but at the end of the day safety is our number one um thing that we really need to pay attention to for our kids our families our teachers everything our community yes Absolutely, doctor. Thank you so much for your time. We so appreciate your wisdom and advice. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.